hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the live stream. Happy Friday, where you're coming from, wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I feel like Jim Carrey from The Truman Show when I say that. Hey, uh, I'm really excited today. Uh, if you are here watching the live stream, today's not an announcement. All these features got announced like weeks and weeks ago. I was at Config ooing and awing as they announced all of them. It was super duper fun. So this is by no means some sort of announcement or first impression because we've all been playing with them most likely for the last few weeks, all of these fun Figma updates. But what I do feel like could be pretty cool is just hang out on a Friday, play with some of the features, maybe look at some cool examples of how other people are using these features as well as how I'm kind of thinking about using some of these cool features. Of course, we're talking about all the cool Figma updates like dev mode, like variables, like expressions and logic and advanced prototyping. We also have some auto layout features and a few other little tips and tricks along the way. So we're gonna cover all of those things today. But as we're doing that, I'd love to just chat with people. How's everybody doing? Uh, where's everybody coming from? Put that down in the chat. We are currently uh, live streaming to let's see where are we live stream we're live streaming to youtube uh uh, uh blah, youtube twitch facebook as well as linkedin so hello to the whole linkedin crew we're not this is kind of new for us to be streaming over here we're excited uh hey let me know uh, yeah where are you coming from and i want to know what your weekend plans are give me an emoji that represents those weekend plans uh are you maybe going swimming give me a little pool some water a swimmer are you maybe sleeping in and recovering uh show me a little bed or some sleeping um let's try to keep it pg rated uh with the emojis if we can but besides that we are going to dive in and start talking about some figma features uh okay but before we do that actually before we get too far i know this is really fun and i love hanging out and doing live streams with everybody on the social medias but i do have an exclusive event coming up i'm doing a one hour interview prep live event where i cover what it looks like to get interviewed to have a successful interview how can you make a massive impression uh, while you're interviewing and this event is taking place in my design champions community so if you're interested sign up become a design champ it's about the cost of a, a fancy latte or two per month and uh, you get the opportunity to be a part of not only this event, but you also get to be a part of multiple events each month, like design critiques, office hours, uh, special events like this one, as well as engage with me, ask me questions, get in the community, get feedback on your design work and be part of a growing and thriving design community. Consider signing up for the Design Champs. The link should be in the description of this YouTube video, or you can just head over to uh, jessieshowalter.com and you can look for Design Champs community there. That'd be pretty cool. All right, let's dive in. And uh, actually, oh, I wanna point this out. This is really cool. So I was in my community this morning. We, we do everything inside of Circle, so it's super dope. Uh, but we had some people inside of the community asking uh, if maybe we would like to, as a group, as a Design Champion group, snatch up an Airbnb at, over at Adobe Max. The, uh, I guess, early bird pricing ends um today or tomorrow on the 15th so maybe we'll set up a design champ airbnb and actually hang out together that's what i'm talking about i actually got to meet some of my design champions uh at the figma conference so that was pretty fun so consider signing up and becoming a part of that it's a growing thriving community hey let's dive into figma you know figma here we are we all feel like we're home we got a couple of emojis jumping into the chat um, and people saying they're from Arkansas, they're from Poland, they're from San Antonio, Texas, and Morocco. Hello to everybody. Um, all right, so we're in a design file. Let's talk about the very first thing um, that kind of popped in for me because I'm a really big proponent of designer developer handoff and Figma said we are too. And they introduced dev mode, which is the new way to really communicate, collaborate, uh, between design and engineering teams. Uh, we used to have up here in the top right-hand corner, if this is new to you, this is new to you. If it's not, let's just chat about it. We used to have design prototype and inspect mode, and they were like, Pah, inspect mode. Let's do away with that whole inspect mode nonsense. And let's introduce dev mode. Okay, so we turn on dev mode. What do we get? Well, first thing you're gonna get is you still have all the same things you used to have in inspect mode. We can comment, we can leave feedback, all that kind of stuff. Um, but we have some extra spiciness, right? So uh, our first off, one of the things I thought was kind of the coolest was that uh, Figma introduced the box model, which is just kind of standard, right? Then we're talking about a mobile application here. Although let's say this is a responsive web uh, like application or website. 
um, we introduced the basic idea of the box model, which consists of right border margin padding. This is the HTML box model that we've known about for years and years and years. And now by clicking on any particular element, we actually get some sort of understanding, right? Even as I hover over it, look at that. I get this really cool preview of the box model in play and I get all those details here as well as the code being displayed immediately. That's pretty rad. Um, and you have lots of opportunities here, right? Like where you can actually copy the code out, entire code. Um, you still get all the normal things we used to get in inspect mode, like is there any interactions, the color used, the assets to download, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff is cool, right? Great, except now we have things like these dev resources. So we can add development links, right? Storybook, GitHub, Jira, other tools. Let's go ahead and click on the plus and we can paste a link in there. So if what we're talking about here, like for instance, this is kind of everything, we need to think of everything now in in use cases and work streams and workflows because we can't just talk about features and go, that's a cool feature. How the heck do we use it? Uh, that's what we really need to start be thinking of right now. The idea would be, let's say, the, the page that we're on right now is music app favoriting. Let's say this is a feature that we're building right now, right? Look, here we have some sort of favoriting feature that's going on, right? So let's zoom into that favoriting kind of like area. That's the area that we're making some sort of ticket for or pull requests for. Well, then now what we need to do is we need to add some sort of dev resource. Let's say this design that I'm working on is linked to a JIRA ticket. I'm going to go ahead and add the link to the JIRA ticket in here. What's cool about this is you can actually connect JIRA or any of these applications or storybook or whatever together. The, the link to my Figma, the exact spot and resource and asset inside of my Figma file on the correct page, the correct area is going to be linked to that JIRA ticket, right? So now just let's just talk right off the bat. Engineers live inside of their ticketing system, whether that's Pivotal Tracker or Jira or whatever it is, they're going to live inside of those epics, those stories, those tickets. And so we can say, hey, there's an issue with this. I linked it inside the Jira ticket. Bam, there's a connection. All they have to do is then click on that link in the Jira ticket and they are shot right over here to the Figma file where they don't have to. And here's the next best part. They don't really have to be like an expert in using Figma, right? Because you'll notice this off the bat, right off the bat, most of the layers are actually hidden, right? And all we kind of see inside of dev mode is the actual element. Like, look, there's, I'm not seeing everything inside. It's not expanding everything. But what I think is actually the best is just with a simple click of the mouse, like right or left, look, we can jump into, show me the landing page. Look, I can click right here, show me the home page. And it's actually going to fly over like we've seen in some other third party tools, like maybe Zeppelin or some of the others and say, hey, I really wanna see some of these like elements. Now, you'll notice that we're now inside of this design. These are the things that have been set to like ready, that are ready for development. How do we do that? Let's turn dev mode back off. You'll notice when I come over here, I'm in my next page. This is ready for dev, right? We were able to turn this little tag on saying, remove ready for dev status or create that ready for dev status. When I turn it on, these are the things. Your, your engineers don't have to weed through multiple pages. They just get to go directly to the spot where you have said, this is for you. This is ready for you, which is a huge weight off of your engineer's shoulders, right? They can jump in here, <coughs> excuse me, inside of dev mode. And all they have to do is just click on the particular page. It jumps them right there. Now they can use their right and left keys and they can just fly over, right? Like through the layers and they don't have to like figure out how to move around on an infinite canvas. You'd be surprised having to teach engineers how to use Figma if they've never used it before. I'm like, oh, you gotta hold down space, move it around, do that whole thing. They don't have to do any of that anymore. All they have to do is just click, right? Like on these little pages right here, it moves them to it. They can click on the particular, excuse me, specific element they're looking for and they get all the details. Now, what else is really cool? Well, they also added things like plugins. We're talking about adding integrations with Figma to code. So like we can actually move these things to HTML, Tailwind, like TypeScript. We have integrations with Anima, FireJet. You also have like direct implementation. I'm not gonna get into this today, but you have direct implementation with VS Code. They have a new plugin there where inside of their code editor, they can actually see the Figma file there. This is like, 
mind-blowing, like absolute mind-blowing, um, like integration and collaboration between engineers and designers. So dev mode, I'm not going to hang on it for a really, really long time, but I will for 100%, like let's jump in the comments here and see what people are saying because uh, T20 says, I just can't get down with the whole Neo brutalist thing. You're talking about the design that we're working on here. I get you. Hey, it's not for everybody, but I think it's kind of fun. Um, it's definitely a departure. I actually just got back from another conference. I actually got to meet up uh, with the guy from Hype4 Academy, Mikhail uh, Malwitz, I think his last name is. And we chatted a little bit about how boring a lot of UI design and web design is nowadays because everyone's kind of following the template. So I kind of like things like Neo Brutalist. I kind of like some different styles to mix things up. I think it's fun. Hey, let's jump in. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to drop those in the chat. We can move into a question and answer time. But until that, let's jump back over. We'll talk about like maybe some of the next features that I'm really, really excited about. I'm going to jump back over into my design because I just kind of want to talk about advanced prototyping. Uh, if you want to play around a little bit more with dev mode, um, what I would recommend is jumping into the Figma community and downloading the dev mode playground. You can get all the information about like what is dev mode and ways to navigate and comparing changes and all this fun stuff, um, you know, like stuff we didn't even cover as we were talking about it, but jump in. All you got to do is go to the Figma community and look up dev mode or advanced prototyping playground and you'll get it. This is the advanced prototyping playground where we talk about things like variables, expressions, conditionals, modes, and additional resources, but we can just do that. Jump back in. We have a couple people asking questions. So why don't we really quickly, I'll take a sip of my coffee, move into a question and answer time. All right, looks like we got a question from Vanessa. How do I turn a frame into a ready for dev? Still struggling with that. That's cool. That's totally a fair question. If we are ready for any particular uh, uh, work to be done, what we want to do is draw a section around it, right? So what I'm going to do is draw a frame around these items. I can right click on it and then I can, where did it go? Uh, we can, oh, where is our little section thing? Let's try that again. Man, maybe I'm struggling with it too. I'm going to hit that. Let's turn it, convert it to a section. So you got to draw a blank frame with nothing inside of it, convert it to a section, and then you can move your designs into that section. And you'll see like when we zoom into the section, we get, I'm going to zoom out here. Let's just, there we go. And then zoom in here. You can see this little, this little element right here that says whoop, that you are mark as ready for dev. So uh, it is a little, for me, it's actually, <coughs> it feels a little bit funky to have to draw these empty artboards first. And we're gonna get into that more as we start talking about variables, but that is kind of the deal. Like F for frame, draw your frame out, make sure it's empty, convert it to a section, make it ready for dev. And then you're basically dragging elements inside of it. And again, sections are similar to frames. You can style them any way you want. But now our engineers will come directly to this spot, right? So I think the idea behind now converting artboards or frames into sections is that you're saying this is a presentation, so to speak. I'm encapsulating everything that is ready for dev. I think that's the idea because it's not only a technical thing. What do I do and where do I press? But it's kind of a mental model and a mindset in your workflow where Figma is kind of inserting what is the proper workflow, right? Like we don't want to send developers to massive canvases with 500, 600 screens on it. We want to say, hey, let's work on a specific feature or flow. And then once that feature or flow is ready, once those screens are ready, encapsulate them, mark them ready for dev, we're moving on, right? That's kind of the idea. Uh, Chirig says, which is the best Figma to code plugin? Also, how can we make our journey of converting Figma to code? Um, you know, I, 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 ooh, man, that's a tricky question. Which one is best? Um, honestly, I kind of just think using for your engineers, if we're talking engineer specific, I think that uh, allowing them to use the VS Code plugin for Figma is just way better. I think that's the way to go because they can get a lot of code information there. Um, I like the uh, the Figma to HTML Tailwind, Tailwind CSS one. That one seems to work great. Anima is also a good option. They've been doing this for a long time. So their integration is pretty seamless as well. Um, okay, yep, bup, 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 bup. Uh, and then your other question was, how can we make our journey of converting Figma to code? 
Yeah, um, I don't know exactly what you mean by that, but I will say this. I was sitting with a couple people at the config conference a couple weeks ago, and we were taking bets on how quick or how soon we think Figma is going to have like just not just better code integration or better code plugins, but actually just full blown code output like directly from Figma because there's so many companies that are already doing no code tools like Flutterflow and Bravo Studio and other tools like that where you're basically designing in Canvas and it's just creating a code base for you. So um, I'm we're taking bets on how long before that. So I'm not quite sure how much what you meant by that, but hopefully that helped with the question. Let's jump back into our screen. We'll do a little bit more stuff because we're going to talk a little bit about some advanced prototyping stuff. Now, um, when we say advanced prototyping, I think the first thing to think of is obviously variables. So, um, you know, with that being said, I'm going to jump over. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to show you a little bit of an experiment with variables, right? So the idea of advanced prototyping is supposed to be around um, limiting the amount of what they call noodles, right? The amount of wires, noodles, connections going from screen to screen. Now, as soon as, <coughs> excuse me, design tools integrated or inter introduced things like interactive components where I could toggle a switch on and off or have some sort of hover state without having to go from screen to screen. As soon as that happened, we reduced the amount of screens and it felt great. But what happens when we want to do something like this, right? Where we have a piece of text that says like welcome and we would like to whenever I press a button I'd like to inject that word in here I'd have to have multiple artboards for each one of these and I have to go back and forth right like so I'd have to have another artboard here that says hola right and when I click on this one I'm then navigating the artboard so the introduction of variables is what has really allowed us to say goodbye to this and um, really be able to do complex things in one artboard or in one screen. So um, that's really like going to be, for me, the first kind of powerful thing. And let's just dive into it right now because the first thing you need to know is that every file now, every Figma file has local variables. If you just click on the canvas, not on specific things, but if you click on the canvas itself, we have this spot where we have local variables. We're going to open it up and you're going to see I have kind of Really what this is mimicking is like a database, right? I'm creating almost like a SQL database or a code database full of variables. If you don't know what variables are, they are a bit of stored information, okay? Think of, I was just fishing with my son this morning and he brought out his tackle box and in that tackle box, there was little sections. This section had hooks, this section had bait, this section had lures, right? This is the idea of storing variables in a code base or database. I can say, hey, I'm gonna put all of my hooks inside of this or this specific hook inside of this compartment. And whenever I need that hook, I know I can go in and grab that hook and I can use that hook. Well, you can do this at scale because you don't just have one hook, right? When you create a variable, it is a limitless object, right? That can be used over and over and over. So I can insert that object in multiple places and it can just be used over and over and over. That's the basic premise of programming with variables. We're doing that now inside of Figma. So you can see I have my database open here and you can see I have lots of different collections, right? These are different collections or sets of information inside of my database, okay? Um, and we have somebody from LinkedIn saying, I used variables in ProtoPy and Figma is adapting it to variables. Yeah, yeah, they are. This I love ProtoPy, I'm a huge fan of ProtoPy and they were really the first ones in the prototyping world to start doing this. Figma kind of yanked it, let's just be honest. So, you know, I have a, an entire collection for like a checkout experience that has like a, a value or a, a variable named quantity and its value is currently set to zero. I have user info, right? Like from, imagine you're building an application. We would have a variable called username, user age, user location. Are they logged in? And we have different types of variables that you can create. We have strings, which are basically text-based information. I could double click on this and change it, right? To John or whatever. You have, uh, you have integers, which are numbers. Right, we have um, we have Boolean operations, which are basically true or false, and we have one more. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Somebody remembers that? Oh, colors, right? We have colors as well. You can see. Let's go back to my theme. We also have colors where we can choose hex values. So these are great, like fantastic tools for us to use. But let's jump down in my theme, and I'm going to go to my welcome statements. Look, now I have 
Um, I have a bunch of objects, a bunch of variables here. The first one is an English variable and its value is hello. I have a Spanish one. Its value is hola, French, bonjour, welcome, hello, and error, error. Okay, so what's the big deal? Like, what can I do with these things? Well, let me hide them. Now you know where to find the, all the global variables and create new variables in there if you want to. Like, again, if I want another one and this one could be another string and we could call this you know, Mandar oh, I don't know how to spell Mandarin. That might be Mandarin. And then we're going to add the value there. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to speak Mandarin. So, you know, whatever it is, you would put whatever that value is, right? And you can always go back and manage these, or we can right click and edit them or delete them. You can even organize these. Let's get into that really quickly, because look, we have um, similar to the way that you could organize variables or excuse me, styles, local styles inside of your Figma document. Just by adding a slash, I now inside of my theme, I have multiple categories. Like here's your main like category. Here's a text-based category. So yes, <clears throat> excuse me, you can uh, organize these as well. So we have those welcome, all those different welcome statements that we created. What we can do now is with the prototype tab selected, right? We can look and see that our, our little link here has some sort of prototype. And we can click on that little prototype link and we can see what it is. Now we're going to set a variable. We have different, we have, we, these are all the interactions from prototyping uh, that we've always had, right? Like navigate to or go back or open a link, do some anchor linking stuff. But now we have a couple of new ones. We have setting variables and we have conditionals, right? So I love this because this allows us to say something like, hey, I want to set the variable of welcome. Well, what's that? Why don't I click on welcome really quick and I can make sure that I'm actually creating an interaction here, right? So I, I want to say that this needs to set the variable. What do I want to do? I want to set the variable to what? Let's just work, like look for it really quickly. I want to set the variable welcome there. Okay, great. Fantastic, right? Now that's actually doing an interaction, so that was wrong. Let's go back really quickly to design because what you'll notice is over on the right-hand side, when we have elements selected, we get these little gears that are happening here, right? Let's zoom in even more. So like if there's the ability for you to use a variable on something, you'll see the gear pop up. For instance, if I click the button, where does the gear pop up? Let's scroll down and find the gear, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Do we have like the gear being able to be used? We should. Like, let's click text again. There's the gear. Okay, fantastic. If I was to draw a rectangle here uh, and we can see like the colors that are being used, like we, we should be able to, should be able to, boom. Like actually look on the layer, there's the gear, right? We can say, hey, what do we want to use here? So all I'm trying to say is, <coughs> excuse me, look for the gear, right? So with it selected, we're in design mode. We're going to look for the gear and we're going to set this to the uh, ba, 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 welcome. We're going to set it to welcome. Boom. It immediately sets it to whatever the content was of that variable, which is hello. Okay, fantastic, right? So now let's come back to our prototype because we want some sort of interaction to take place, right? And that was we want to change that variable. This means, hey, go into that tackle box, go into that compartment, find that thing that says variable and change it, right? We want to set the variable of welcome. And we, what do we want to set it to? We want to set it to the Spanish version, right? Okay, fantastic. That means uh, that we can now actually just run this and it doesn't have to go anywhere. So let's grab our frame and I'm actually going to drop down on the top right-hand side to the, one of the newer features, which is to not present the whole screen, but just preview it in a frame right here, right? Right. So we can actually work in real time. It's actually a small thing, but it's one of my one of my favorite little updates. So why don't we just make it big so we can see? So as soon as I press Ola, boom, it's gonna insert that variable inside, right? And we can do this for the rest of these as well, right? We can go ahead and like see that we have interactions happening for each one of these as well. Now I'm gonna zoom out, right? And let's see if we can't come in here. You'll notice. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah, low case, jump in. So now we have the English version and we're saying like, hey, on the English version, we want to set welcome, welcome spelled wrong in my variable, so all about, sorry about that. We wanna set that to English. And on this one, we want to set it to French. Now you'll notice this little wishbone, right? That wishbone is the conditional logic that we're able to apply, right? 
if welcome is already equal to French, this is, oh, we're getting into programming. Come on, designer, stick with me. Then I want to navigate somewhere. I want to do something. I didn't finish this out, but this was just like me starting it so you could see it. So let's, let's play this thing again really quickly, shall we? Because now we can go, hola, hello, bonjour, right? Hello, back and forth. We can jump between these, right? But because we have conditional logic on that last one, right, we're going to, we're going to get some funky things. So here's what we want to do. We want to zoom in and we're going to just edit our thing here and navigate to, boom, let's do this. Set welcome to French. Now it should work absolutely perfectly. I'm going to preview it again. There's bonjour. Hello. Okay, great. Now, like all this to be said, you have like a lot of opportunities. The same thing you can do here, right? Like imagine making a counter in side of like Figma before. If I wanted to iterate on this number, I'd have to count it up and down with multiple artboards that have one, two, three. <coughs> I'd have to do some sort of crazy magic with multiple artboards. Well, now we have variables and what we can do is just come in here and you can see that, uh, look, look at our little gear, right? Like it's set currently, like the value of it is set to quantity, which is at zero. Let's go over to prototype. What do we have happening here? We're saying, hey, uh, when I click this on click, I want to set the variable to, of quantity. What do I want to set it to? I want to set it to quantity plus some. So now we're writing, this is called writing expressions right here, right? It's taking a variable and it's expressing some sort of thought or opinion. It's an injecting some sort of mathematical equation, right? Expressions into that, uh, that formula that we have going. Right? So I'm doing the same thing with here, like on this one, I'm iterating it by 10. So I'm just saying, Hey, when I click on this, please just update this number for me. Just please change the text. So why don't we actually just grab this counter? We'll press play. And now we can see I'm doing it. And because I have it in auto layout, it is actually like moving like everything around. Right. Boom, 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 boom. And I can just iterate up and down. And this is all happening on the same page. That would have been pretty much near impossible to do that like on an infinite level. So iterations made easy, Stephen Husao Adin said over on LinkedIn. So yeah, Vanessa is asking this question. Are we creating variables from components or from text? The idea here is you have all these variables stored in the background. Now you get to pick a receptacle to apply that variable to. All right, let me, I'll try to like clarify this even more if I can, right? Let's jump back in and take a look really quickly uh, because Again, that is the idea, right? Like I can draw out a rectangle and I can go back into design mode, right? And I'm going to pick like a color, right? Do we see like our little thing that's happening here? Okay, great. Like our libraries now, our fill colors are being pulled where? They're being pulled from, not from our local styles anymore because we don't see any local styles over here. I see local text styles, but I don't see any local color styles. Where are they be being pulled from? They're being pulled from my local variables, right? If I jump down to theme, you can see we have these theme colors that we've created. Now I've created light mode. I've created dark mode. Why have I done this? Because man, I want to be able to create these light modes and dark modes, right? So what's great about it is when I assign, look, you'll see, notice here, my buttons, like the fill of this is using my themes, main orange, right? Themes, main black, like the selection colors, everything in here is using my theme colors. Why does that matter? Because I can create a new section over here, right? And what's great is like, check this out. Like the, all the screens that are over here are just the same screens. All I did was like duplicate, like you can drag it there. But when I drag it into the dark mode, boom, it just flips it over to dark mode. Are you with that? Like, check it out. Boom, light to dark. Let's zoom in so you can see that magic taking place. Light mode, dark mode, light mode, dark mode. How is that happening? Well, this artboard that I set here, this section that's now ready for development has been set to, look, it's been set to dark mode, right? If I wanna change everything inside all at once, I can simply change like the different theme here across the entire section that goes from light mode to dark mode. So what you're doing is you're now establishing entire containers and saying, Hey, apply everything inside here, change all the variables all at once. Right. Or you can just update things on the fly, right? Like I can come into individual portions of my design and, and say, Hey, I want you to use like this certain thing instead. Don't use 
this color. Instead, use something from a different like part of my like database, okay? So that's the idea here with variables. Lots of options, lots of opportunities. Let's look at some people who are using variables, expressions, and stuff like that. Way more complex than what I'm showing you here. This is the basics. I think everybody should start using variables and expressions for advanced prototyping reasons immediately. It's gonna save you so many excess screens, but let's look at some just absolute crazy examples of what people are doing. Let's uh, talk about um, Flappy Bird. This is, uh, this is Dave Williams, and he literally programmed the game Flappy Bird inside of, if you haven't seen this, it's wild, inside of Figma using variables. Now, here's what's crazy. He's showing you the documentation, right? So he's showing you that he's created all these variables, like a frame number, like is the UI playing or not? Like he has the Y position, the X position, because why? Because he's actually, he's, he's placing, like he's creating numbers, right? And then he's actually being able to change like the position. There's people out there right now who are creating like velocity, like engines using all these variables. It's, I know somebody says it's absolutely crazy. It is crazy. And watch, you could actually play it. So I'm gonna press play. I'm gonna preview it right now. Check this out, right? So tap, there it is, we're playing, I'm clicking. Oh, I, I fell to the bottom, let's click again. I'm clicking a bunch, let's just, I'll, I'll show you my mouse here. Boom, okay, let's try one more time. And let's see if we could actually play Flappy Bird and get it, I'm clicking, clicking. Oh, okay, apparently I'm really bad at Flappy Bird, but you can see it's actually, it's tracking score. It's allowing you to restart. Like, so you can see the score up above, right? Like we go through one pipe, it's tracking one. Going through the second pipe, it's tracking two. Okay, look, and now it shows us that score. So it is, <coughs> excuse me, it's actually storing information. It's changing the variables and updating them on the fly. This is what computer programs do. This is how you actually build games. It's like by thinking through all the conditional logic of everything, it's actually doing it. Let's show another one that's really, really cool. Um, this one was made by Faku Kabani, and he made a really cool tic-tac-toe game. And he's showing you the screens, right? Like, look, you have this really cool, um, kind of like skeuomorphic kind of tic-tac-toe design happening here. And then he has the different states of like when people win or lose, and he has the different interactive components down below. And look, we can go ahead and play our tic-tac-toe game. Let's zoom in on our tic-tac-toe game so you can see it. And look, as we hover, we see it's currently the star's turn. So every time we hover, it's only showing us the star. We click, boom, it clicks everything over to the circle now. So let's do circle here, star there. Let's say circle is really, really dumb. We put, <laughs> we put circle there and star plays and star wins. Now we can go to the next round and we can restart if we want. And it's tracking the overall progress like of the amount of games played. It's like a lot of conditional logic happening here which is super crazy, tic-tac-toe, wow, okay. So that's super fun. And let's do one more. This one, in my opinion, is even crazier. This is by the same person. Go show Faku Kabani some love because this is a button mashing gravity game uh, called Fourth Moon. And the idea is, let's just go ahead and run it really quickly. The idea is, and actually, you know what? Like, so that we can see this and give it a little bit more love, let's run it in like full view. So we're only focusing on it and I'm gonna need to fit to the screen. Okay, so the idea here is you'll notice like you press P to play and then when I press P to play, boom, you'll notice that like the person, so two people can play this at the same time that you want, this person needs to be pressing L. When they press L, they're trying to smash the L button to bring it close to them. See how every time I press L, it's actually tracking up here over where my mouse is. And now gravity is kind of kicking. The person down here needs to be pressing A. And when they press A, it's bringing gravity closer to their planet. And so now we have A and L on the keyboard and people are gonna be button mashing. And if somebody mashes the button harder, right? Like, and it goes all the way down. Let's do it again really quickly. Boom, 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 boom. What is happening? I'm messing things up. Okay, let's try one more time. L, 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 and boom, it brings it up. Like, and that person won, okay? So super duper cool. And obviously like we can press, what is it? N for the next moon or R to restart. I also did, I didn't even show you this. This is super cool because he has variables and conditional logic here. You get to pick your planet, which is pretty stinking cool. So maybe I wanna be this planet this time 
and that person wants to be the dark planet. Okay, cool. Let's play again, right? And again, it's just the same thing. But look, see how the color variable for each planet is being represented. All they had to do was actually change the variable used in these colors. And now everything just feels really consistent. Just really beautiful, like example of doing something like that. All right. So now there's a bunch of other updates inside of Figma right now. Like obviously the auto layout, they added wrap, which is really, really cool. Um, so a lot of other cool little things that are happening. But for me, these are my favorite dev mode, advanced prototyping, using variables, expressions, conditional logic, um, and then also the inline previewer. Let's just talk about how great that is. Um, and of course, you can be using all of these things uh, inside of your design work right now. And if this is really intimidating, if you're watching this going, this is like super duper advanced stuff inside of Figma. I'm just trying to figure out the normal stuff. Then maybe consider signing up for my new course that just launched last month. It's a mini course, an introduction to UI and UX design. You can get through the course in about four or five hours, but in four or five very quick hours, you'll actually be presented with a capstone project. You'll walk that project all the way through. You'll use the basics of Figma, not the hyper, hyper advanced stuff, but the basics of Figma to actually build really cool intuitive designs. You'll have something really cool to show for it at the end. And it's the way for you to get started, get your foot in the door to using Figma, learning UI design, learning UX design. We do a little bit of research stuff. We do a little bit of UI stuff, a little bit of UX stuff. And at the end of the day, you get a shotgun blast, 10,000 foot view of the UI UX design industry. There's even a little bit of career prep stuff in there. So you can head over to my website and check out that course if you want to. You just go to jessishowalter.com and hit courses. And uh, you can hit the intro to UI UX design course and you can learn more about this course, but it's easy to get in. It's only 49 bucks. It's on sale right now, 50% off. So jump in and uh, check out the course. I'd love to have you. We have so far, we have about 400 people who've taken the course and getting fantastic feedback from it. So I'd love you to join the course as well. Uh, all right, let's move into another time of question and answer. All right, this isn't really a question, but uh, uh, Mikey Boy 117 says, just want to say thank you for your amazing content. Finished a uh, design foundation course and your videos filled in the gaps in course material better than any other creators. Keep it up. Thank you very much, Mikey. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, Andrea is saying kind of a similar thing. Thank you for all your videos. Help me so much with my journey to become a UX UI designer. Big support from Italy. Thank you so much. Hey, if you're in Italy, you should definitely follow Sarah Andretti. She's one of my favorite Italian designers product designer over at Meta, has an amazing Instagram channel, talks a lot about UI UX design. design. You probably already know her. She's amazing. Um, but I got to hang out with her at Config. Me and a group of people had dinner and got to meet a bunch of other cool design content creators. That was fun. Uh, a LinkedIn user, we don't know who, says, I used Boolean to show an error message when a user didn't put in a username for login form. Fan. Fantastic, right? Make those prototypes actually click in. Now you can, right now there's no input field where we can actually type inside of it, but you could actually use conditionals and logic and variables. It'd be very, very complex to actually type in. Um, yeah, to actually type in something. It'd be maybe a lot of work, but you could make it happen. I'm sure somebody's already done it out there and you should check the community. Um, all right, and uh, let's see. Some people are commenting on all the skeuomorphic need uh, like uh, designs that I was showcasing today, they are super cool. Um, absolutely. The Vanessa said, oh, we already answered Vanessa's question. Are we creating variables from components or just from text? Well, I mean, you can create them inside of the components and the interactive components. You can do a lot of variable and expression work on those to make them really extendable. You should actually absolutely consider doing that. Um, all right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, T20 said earlier, uh, do you worry that Figbox or Figma will introduce Flexbox will be an issue that with most devs going structures in grid, will devs just use flex output and not rewrite the grid to save time? They could, you know, uh, I actually just got back from Spain and I went to Penpot Fest. If you don't know what Penpot is, Penpot is an open source design tool. Um, they're building a phenomenal open source design tool that's very, very similar to Figma. And they actually just introduced Grid. So you can actually design with Grid. Um, and it's really, really flexible. They have minimum, maximum width. They have Flexbox. They have Grid. So they're introducing Grid because it is a front-end development standard, especially if you're designing websites. It would be nice to think in Grid. Um, I think, I'll just do hot take right now. I think what's problematic about that might be 
that uh, people have to, des designers have to learn a little bit more than they've had to in the past. Right now, everything you've seen on the stream, designers are being challenged to think a little bit more like developers, to think in variables, to think about conditional logic and expressions. Um, it makes sense that they would also start thinking through things like some of the web standards that we have right now, like Flexbox and uh, CSS grid. Um, so that makes sense to me. I think it's healthy. I think it's good for you to do that, to start learning some of those technologies and some of those web standards. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know if Figma is going to add grid. I think they probably will since some of their open source competitors are, um, I think that they could. So, uh, Hey, that's it for the day. Um, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you so much for joining me for the stream. Again, I would love to hang out with you more. Consider joining the design champions community uh, we meet up multiple times a month it's a great place to get more of your questions answered and we have a really cool event coming up on july 20th 11:30 pacific standard time it's going to be an interview prep session where we just walk through in my opinion uh, from my time uh, walking through interviews design interviews from actually interviewing and hiring uh, multiple designers these are the types of questions that people are answering uh, and so consider joining and becoming a design champion and you can walk through not only events like this, but events that we have each and every month. T20's Grunt, thank you so much for the $10 donation. I appreciate that. That helps the channel grow. Uh, and so absolutely, yeah, inside of a uh, question by Studyite says, can I send my UI designs to get feedback 100%? Let me show you how. Become a design champion and you can head over here into the show and tell channel. And that's where people are posting work and getting feedback on their work. You can see like, here's Marissa White that posted and got some feedback on her mobile and desktop application. Here is uh, Taylor um, Rodriguez who posted some information. He got feedback. Um, so this is a place to actually get feedback. You can also just ask questions and get those questions answered uh, by hundreds of other like members in the community. We also have a really cool just chat room that's similar to Slack, but it doesn't suck. It's super amazing. Uh, you have access to not only the event coming up, but all of the future events that are happening, as well as tons of design resources, paid files, templates, things you can't get anywhere else from me, as well as exclusive posts and opportunities to meet up and chat with other people. I just recently posted um, a little bit of a hot take opinion on using threads um, on Meta's new Twitter comparison uh, or competitor. So definitely jump in, become part of the community and don't miss out on that opportunity. Hey, I appreciate all of you. I hope you're having a fantastic Friday uh, and I hope you have a great week and rest up and we'll be back at it next week. We're gonna be doing more live streams. I took uh, some time off from live streams, but we'll be back at it uh, each and every week here on the channel. So stay tuned for really cool things that are happening, new courses coming out, new opportunities. And uh, can't wait to chat with more of you and hang out with more of you. So hopefully we'll see you around. Take care, everybody.